How you doing, YouTube? Matt Mess of Beer Reviews. Back to yet another review. New brewery time. In the form of Opportunity Brewing Company. This is their Irish Amnesia India Pale Ale. Um, yeah, you saw me like furrow my brow right there. Um, reason why is because this place says they're from Flemington, New Jersey, which is like 40 minutes away from me, and I've never heard of them before. Okay, fair enough. New brewery opens, but cans kind of pop out of nowhere. That's kind of weird. And I looked up the brewery real quick, and I said established 2018. We're in September 2019, so that means they've been open almost a year, and I have heard nothing of them. So I'm kind of curious about this. Picked this up off the shelf at a local bottle shop. Uh, it says, Salante, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Irish Amnesia India Pale Ale. We forget all of our troubles, but remember to have a great pint. And please, uh, Opportunity Brewing, they are at Flemington. Ooh, okay, brewed and packaged by Cypress Brewing Company. We know them. We've done a couple Cypress beers. Yeah, so let's see what this sucker has. So you're talking about a new brewery. Clear beer. Clear beer alert. So all you Haze bros going to fucking want to turn this off right now. Um, we'll see what's what. Man, you don't see a lot of clear beers out of the shoot nowadays. Label-wise... Goddamn, light's not working again. Label-wise... Mm, listen. Mom off the boat from Scotland. Never American citizen, but we're Irish. So I'm all about things but i don't know irish does not scream crap beer to me and i don't know it just comes off a little bit know, cheesy or something anyway uh yeah i mean that looks like if that is an ipa that is an old school ipa i mean we're not even talking like a a um i mean i guess there's a haziness to it there's a subtle haziness to it if anything it looks like a west coast ipa let's put it that way midwest ipa or west coast ipa i mean you know soft haze orange brownish yellow kind of menages colors very soft gentle haze quarter pinky finger half pinky finger a decently creamy soapy kind of edge with a little bit of tight compact bubbles going on she doesn't look like a bad beer but it's so you know so many new breweries open nowadays when you see these you're like okay and this is fresh and this is one of the reasons why i picked it up is because it's like less than two weeks old and i was like okay two weeks old new brewery let's give it a whirl let's get a nose okay give it a swirl that is very, very old school. Um, that is a, a smalty, tea bag, spicy, a little bit of herbaly uh, hoppiness. I mean, that is old school as old school could be. I mean, it really did. The, the, the hops come off. Maybe they're trying for this because I was going to be like the hops come off very English like. I mean, you know, Ireland, England, two totally different things. Um, but you know, it comes off very fuggly, it comes off Kent Goldings, it comes off that kind of hops. Um, you know, it's, it's spicy, a little bit herbal, um, uh, you know, very much like a tea bag. Um, and then you get a, a maltiness that's above your typical maltiness. You know, a lot of those brewers use flaked oats and sugars and stuff like that to really kind of get the beer where it wants to be alcohol. Why this, this one coming at seven and change 7.1. Um, this smells like, you know, kind of Maris Otter. You know, it's something like that, like a little bit heftier of a malt. You don't see a lot of brewers use. You see some, you know, KCBC, a couple brewers use that in their beers. But it smells like a kind of like a, not even a West Coast IPA. It smells like a hopped up. It's not an ESB. It's like a, it's like somewhere between an ESB and a West Coast IPA is what I'm getting. Not necessarily a bad thing. It's not what you expect. Maybe that's a good thing. Cheers. I mean, it's exactly how it comes off. I mean, there's a big nutty malt to it. Nutty with the slightest dollop of like caramel. Very, very subtle. There's a decent bittering component to it. It's, it's very much kind of that English style bittering hops. Um, very nondescript for anything that's more herbally and spicy like the nose would suggest. Uh, nice mouthfeel. Soft, creamy mouthfeel. Uh, definitely a malt forward beer with a hop, but it's, it's, it's more akin to like a Sierra Nevada celebration than it is kind of a, an IPA. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I don't mind it. I think it's well made. It's clean. There's really nothing as far as off flavors go. It's nice. This is really... Listen. So many breweries call beers so many different things nowadays that half the time style doesn't really matter when it comes to what's on the can. And I kind of get that. You know, people call stuff IPAs or hazy IPAs when they don't really they're that's not what they really are um and you know that makes sense because IPAs sell but it's still kind of you know 
that's my panties a little bit in a bunch because when I see a can and it has something on it, I expect it to be that. Now, is this an IPA? By today's standards, it's not. By standards 20 years ago, I think you're kind of closer. It's more kind of like, it's like an ordinary bitter, like a bitter. It's almost like an English bitter. Like I said, somewhere between a West Coast IPA and like an ESB or a bitter or something like that. So in the grand scheme of things, 20, 30 years ago, I think this is an IPA. But times have change. Things do change. And I just don't think it lands there anymore. So am I not going to for putting IPA on there? It is what it is. You know, I was going to buy it regardless. Uh, new brewery, less than two weeks old. I'm probably going to give the can a whirl. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, it's it's more, like I said, Sierra Nevada Celebration, which I wouldn't call an IPA. I'd call almost a spiced winter beer or something along those lines than an IPA. But we're not here to kind of argue classification. We're not a BGCP nerd. Um, we are not doing that whole kind of thing. We're just talking about whether it's a good beer. And going into it, what I expected as far as an IPA, it's not really landing there. But if you were to slap a different label on here and put it in English Bitter or something along those lines, I'd be like, you know, it's a pretty good version of that. So it, it's kind of perception, how you see the beer. So as an IPA, it's an English hopped beer. Let's put it that way. It is pretty well done. Well made, clean gets the point across as far as that goes if you were to classify it that way done and done let's talk about it it's one of the better ipas i've had is like absolutely not it's one of the better english hopped beers um in general like you know your esbs your bitters those kind of beers i've had as of late it'd be one of the better ones to be perfectly honest with you so take that for a grain of salt uh with a grain of salt if you will um let's see what else value availability i think i paid like 13 14 bucks for a four pack could be wrong i think that's what i paid so you know it is what it is it's market value for those kind of beers and leave you with if you like what will you like this um if you like you know english style beers english style ipa if you like uh you know like again esbs bitters those kind of things i think you'd really dig this beer if you're looking for what we envision an ipa to be in today's world this might not do you proper so there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Hopefully enjoying a little bit of a, you know, English bitter jam right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.